Okay, it's time to review chapter 17, uh, the last probability chapter about binomial and geometric probability models. We learned an acronym for testing whether you have a binomial situation or whether you have Bernoulli trials, as it's called in your textbook. Um, many probability questions on the AP exam do fit a binomial model, so it's always a good idea if you're not quite sure instantly how to do a probability problem to check bins and see if it might be a binomial problem. So the B in bin stands for binary, meaning that the outcomes can be described as one of two outcomes, either success or fail. Um, the I stands for independent, so that means that knowing the result of one trial does not affect the result of another trial. For example, rolling a die over and over again would be independent. Um, N number, um, so this is uh, what kind of question is being asked. Is the question asking about the number of um, successes in a fixed number of n trials. Okay, so the number of trials is predetermined in advance and cannot change. And then the S in bins is asking uh, success the same. Is the probability of success P in the same is the same for each and every trial? So in other words, the probability isn't changing um, in subsequent trials. So if you have those four conditions met, bins, uh, then you have a binomial situation. And so if you do, now what? Okay, well if you have a binomial situation, then we have a formula for binomial probability that we learned. Um, it's basically stuff you've already seen in chapter 14, and 15, um, just a little more formalized because many of the um, compound probability questions that we had done, you know, like rolling three dice or something like that, um, can be looked at as binomial. So let me get this erased. Erase. It's not erasing fast enough. Let me try again. There we go. All right, so let's say that we have, let's make up a binomial situation. So um, we have marbles in a bag, and some of them are white, and some of them are not white. So that would be a success fail situation. You could say success is getting a white marble or not getting a white marble, whichever one you want. And then uh, I independent trials. Okay, as long as we're putting the marbles back, that would be independent. If we're not putting them back, it might not be independent. Um, and then N, we can be asked, uh, say we're going to do a fixed number of trials. Maybe we're going to draw five marbles. Okay, and then S, uh, the probability of getting a white marble would be the same every time as long as we're putting it back. Okay, so we could ask a question like, what's the probability of getting, um, let's say, three white marbles in five trials? Okay, so in that situation, we would want the combination of the number of ways that you can choose three things from five, because that's the number of ways you can have three successes out of five trials, and then we want to multiply that by the probability of a success. Let's say that the bag is 20% white marbles, so then the probability of success would be 0.2, and we want to have three successes, so that would be to the third power, because it's 0.2 times 0.2 times 0.2. And then this one minus P is not a success, right? That's a failure, so the probability of that would be 0.8. Uh, sometimes that's represented with a Q instead of one minus P. And then this here is basically n minus x, so that's 5 minus 3. In other words, we would have two failures, okay? And so you can do that on the calculator. Um, you can get combination, or if you have the TI calculator, you can get it on there. So let's look at how to do this um, using the formula on the calculator, okay? So we'll go into the math menu. And actually, let me put the 5 in first, because when you do a combination or permutation, you first number in before you select the combination, probability, and choose combination. So we want 5C3. Okay, so there's 10 different arrangements of three successes and five trials. And then we need to multiply that by 0.2 cubed times 0.8 squared. Oh, I forgot that this calculator cubed. Yeah, my calculator doesn't do this, so I forget that I have to 
get out of the exponent, 0.8 squared. There we go. And so the probability of three white marbles out of five is around 5% if the bag had 20% white marbles. Okay, so let's go back to the slides if it would quit doing that. Program's freezing on me, so hold on just a second. Um, so that is how you do, in general, a binomial question. And then um, sometimes you're asked to find the mean. You know, what do we expect for the mean? And sometimes uh, we're looking at um, a standard deviation questions. So if you're asked to find the mean in a binomial situation, you know, what's the expected outcome or the mean outcome? That is n times p. Right, so in our situation, um, we had had uh, five trials, and probability of success is 0.2, so 5 times 0.2. And the standard deviation is the square root of NPQ. So in our case, that would be 5 times 0.2 times 0.8 square rooted. Okay. Uh, the notation you might see in some problems is a binome parentheses n comma p, because this is a model, just like uh, with the normal model, how you had n for normal and then you had to specify the mean and the standard deviation. So that's a notational thing that you might see that's describing a binomial situation for you. Now you can do these um, elsewhere in your calculator under the distributions menu. Binome PDF will give you the uh, probability um, of success, a certain number of successes. So you have to say how many trials there are, the probability of success, and the number of successes that you are wanting. Okay, so let's look at that. Um, under the distribution menu, go down to binome PDF. I'm just going to ignore that phone. All right. I hate how slow this thing is sometimes. That's not what I wanted. Try again. Okay. Slow down so that it stays with me. This is, doesn't work like a normal calculator. There we go, binome PDF, and we have to say I want five trials, and probability of success is 0.2, and I want three successes. And so you see the same answer that we just got there. Now, uh, binome CDF gives you up to x successes. So if we use, like, if the question asked, what's the probability that you get, um, you know, no more than three whites. Okay, so that would be zero whites, one white, two white, or three white. That would mean up to three successes. And so then you could use binome CDF for that, and that would tell you that. And that's right underneath the binome PDF uh, in the calculator. Complement rule comes in very handy on uh, lots of problems that are binomial because they might ask, you know, something like um, more than three successes, right? And so that would be four successes or five successes. And so you could add four, you know, you could use binome PDF for four successes. You could do it for five successes and then figure out what it is. Um, but if it would say, you know, like, um, you know, four, um, five successes, you could do that. But if it said less than five, then that would probably be easiest to use the complement rule for by doing, you know, one minus five successes. And instead of doing zero plus one plus two plus three plus four. All right. Um, another kind of model we looked at in chapter 17 was geometric. Geometric um, is still Bernoulli trials, so B and T, I mean B, I, and S are exactly the same as for the, uh, excuse me, for the binomial situation, but the question being asked is different. So instead of N, we have T, and so instead of wanting uh, a fixed number of successes, um, we're asking how many trials it will take until a success. Um, and so if that is the situation, then the formula is a little different, right? Because if I'm saying, you know, how long is it going to take until I get a white marble if I have 20% white marbles in the bag? So basically you're saying, okay, I draw one and it's not white. I draw one and it's not white. I draw one and it's not white. And then finally it's white. Okay, so to find the probability of that, okay, so the number of trials until success. So we do 1 minus the probability of success. So that would be 0.8 in the scenario we were looking at, to the x minus 1 power. So, um, well, what is x? Hmm. 
Well, what if we're talking about the probability that I don't get a success until the third trial? Then it would be 3. So then I put in 3 minus 2. Because basically that's saying you fail twice, and then on the third time you finally succeed. So fail, fail, succeed is what this formula says if uh, x is 3. And so we'd have 0 0.8 times 0 0.8 times 0 0.2. Okay? Um, and you can you know, change that x to whatever the question is asking. Now the mean number of trials it would take until a success is 1 divided by p, right? So if the probability of success is 0.2, you do 1 divided by 0.2, 1 divided by 2 tenths, which would be 5. So it, we expect it to take, on average, 5 trials until we would get a white marble. The standard deviation, uh, which rarely comes up um, for a geometric situation, it's rarely asked, is the square root of q over p squared. However, the one for binomial, the square root of npq comes up a lot because it refers to um, some of the things that we did in inference later. Okay, um, you can also use geomet PDF in the calculator, the same place as binome PDF. So if we go look at that under the distribution menu, okay, so there it's way down at the bottom, geomet PDF. And so on this one, instead of putting in n, p, and then x, we only have to put in two numbers. That's the probability of success and when you want to finally get the success. So we can do that situation um, that we talked about. And let's say that uh, we have white marble, 0.2, and I want to know what's the probability that the first time we succeed is on the third trial. And so there it is, 0.128. Okay, and then Geomet CDF, I should say CDF, would tell you the probability of a first success on or before trial X. Okay, so if I want to know what's the probability that I get a success by the third trial, then I want Geomet CDF instead of PDF. Um, again, the complement rule will come in handy for many of the problems related to geometric situations because of the way they're worded. Sometimes you can do, instead of doing, you know, this one plus this one plus this one, you can just do one minus one that's much easier to calculate. Now, although you can use the binome PDF and the geomet CDF, sometimes, you know, it's actually easier to just, you know, do this. You know, use the basic formula of what it is that you're calculating um, because, it makes sense and it's really not that difficult of a calculation whereas when you start to get into these sure binome PDF is fine but remember you can't use that language on the AP stat test in and of itself and expect the readers to pretend that they know what it means and uh, students often get confused with binome CDF because uh, they forget you know well, what does the X mean is it up to that many successes or is it before that many successes you know and the same thing with the bit with the geomet CDF you know, is it the first success um, by that trial or before that trial? You know, so it gets confusing sometimes. So if you if you are determined to use those on the AP exam, please practice so that you're very clear on what each of these commands is telling and what you need to put in them and so on and so forth. Otherwise, using these formulas is very very simple, and I would I would recommend that. Okay. Um, now, if you are in a sampling situation then technically the i in bins or bits is not met uh, because when you draw from a finite population the probability the next event changes slightly like if you draw an ace from a deck of cards and you don't put it back the probability of getting the next ace is a little bit different than the first one um, however if the sample is smaller than 10 percent of the population the probabilities change slightly enough that they're almost as if they didn't change at all and that's kind of just a, a cutoff that's been decided upon and so that we use that in our textbook and for AP stats. So that's where we got the 10% condition from, that if a sample is less than 10% of the population, we can still use binomial and geometric probability models and procedures, which came in handy later for inference also. Um, also, this is where we got our success-fail condition. If um, a binomial model is approximately normal, if we expect at least 10 successes and 10 failures, so that means that NP and NQ are both greater than or equal to 10. If that's true, you can use the normal model instead of binomial model. And so instead of using the binomial for formulas, you can use the Chapter 6 procedures, you know, area under a normal model. Okay, that concludes our review of Chapter 17.